Okay, folks, you should be looking at this page in your book, Timing to Market. As I said this morning, the single most important thing to know is whether the market is going up or down, everything follows from that. If you don't know what the market's doing, it's like driving around at night with your eyes closed. Uh, you can only be lucky so long. You might get lucky and do well for a while, but sooner or later, you know, the market's going to turn. We had so many people in the late 90s and very early 2000s that had made a lot of money in uh, a very easy market. They bought stocks like Cisco that just went higher and higher and higher. And when the market turned, they didn't want to let go and they got hurt. So what we want to do is see how we can tell whether the market is going up or down. Let's look at that next slide. We have a system that we've developed and the system is predicated on the use of this, this vector vest composite. The vector vest composite is the arithmetic average of all the stocks in the database, the price of the arithmetic average of all the stocks in the database. Now, just to be fair, it's not really an average anymore. It's an index because we adjust it for splits and new stocks that come in and old stocks that were taken out, just like you would adjust uh, the Dow Jones Industrial Average. But since we always call it the price, we still call it the price. But it reflects what the market is doing, and I'll show that. We have a buy-sell ratio, relative timing, market timing indicator, and a color guard. And the best way to show you these things is for me to ask Mark to take us into ProGraphics. We will use the market timing graph, which is the next slide on your book. And what I suggest we do is I'll tell you what slide I'm addressing in the book. And I'm going to address this one that is called the market timing graph. And there are several ways you can get into it. The easiest way, of course, is to just click on that header on the home page. What we have here is a one-year graph. It's daily. The little uh, closing prices are, are daily. And we call this the standard graph. We see the price of the composite in the black dots. Uh, we have a 40-day moving average out here. And we have an indicator we call the market timing indicator. Now, Mark, if you would change the period, take us to the all-weekly. This covers about 11 years of data. This goes back to almost, I guess, 95, doesn't it, Mark? Or No, it goes back to January 96, and it uh, takes us to the current time. When we started VectorVest, we just published a, a little book. And it was published once a week. And a guy saw that we were using, he recognized the print type, and he said, you're publishing this on a Hewlett-Packard uh, printer. I said, yeah. He said, well, if you're doing that, I can take that signal, and I can convert it to an electronic program, and we can deliver this information electronically. So he wrote some programs, and we created a product called VectorVest Electronic, which you can do sorts and searches and things, and that was a great little product. And I would go around and show it to people, and people say, well, yeah, but this shows week to week. I would like to see, you know, these comparisons and continuity of the data and it would be nice if you had graphics and you had historical data. So I, re I came back and I reported this to him. And he said, well, he said, let's see if we can write something that had graphics in it. And so he wrote a program that we ultimately call VectorVest ProGraphics. And we released that in January 1995. In February, I was fooling around with the program. And I noticed, and I, and I looked at a graph of the vector vest composite for some reason. And I was stunned because this graph was doing exactly what the market was doing. Because I knew what the market had done over the previous 12 months, and it did exactly what the market was doing. What I mean is if you look at the average of all these stocks, and if they're going down, uh, you know the market is going down. If they're going up, you know the market's going up. So our challenge 
Our challenge was to say, well, if this thing is showing us what the market is doing, wouldn't it be nice if we can get in here and get out there and get in there and get out there and get in there and, and get out there? You know, try to get in at the bottoms and out at the tops. Well, we couldn't quite do that. But Mark, if you could switch the market timing indicator for the buy-sell ratio. And could you zoom in in this area here? Yeah, start right around there. That's good. That's fine. All right. Prior to even doing this, we always had a sense for the, what the market was doing because from the very beginning, we always had data on the, on the number of buys and the number of sells and the number of holes in the database, and that was my very first market timing tool. And, and what we have here is what we call the buy-sell ratio. Since VectorVest gives buy signal to a stock that is going up uh, above the stop price and a sell when they go below, the, the buy-sell ratio is a very good indicator of the health of the market. And we always use that. We studied the data, and what we found is if the market goes down for two consecutive weeks, goes down for two consecutive weeks, we said that gives a preliminary signal of a sustainable downturn. And if the buy-sell ratio is below one, that's the confirmation of that downturn. And if the market goes up for two consecutive weeks, and the buy-sell ratio is above one, we get that confirmation. Well, in this case, we didn't get the confirmation until the third week. And if you go back and you look at this, and you see it works remarkably well. Occasionally, you get into a situation where you get two up weeks, and then it would give you, uh, and you get it confirmed up, then it would turn around and go down for two weeks. And that kind of reversal, you know, is very rare maybe once a year or so, something like that. So we felt we had a reasonably solid system. And what we're saying here, we have the vector vest composite. We talked about the buy-sell ratio. It's very simple to understand. And once again, uh, the buy-sell ratio is packed with information. You can look at the percentage of buys, percentage of sells, and percentage of holes. And you can see how that changes on a day-to-day -day basis. And you can see whether the market is selling losers and buying winners or selling winners and buying losers. You know, and you get different kinds of rotation internally in the market. But we make the most use of it in the market timing system. Now, this data we're looking at here is 1997. Could you click on, one, click on that point to the left of it, Mark? All right, what is that? That buy-sell ratio, uh, buy ratio is 0.11. One of the things we have observed is when this buy-sell ratio goes below 0.2, the market is very oversold, and you got to start thinking about buying long, going long. Unzoom. Take that price off, Mark. And take the moving average off. Okay. You see this? See these points down here? See these points down here? When it gets below 0.2, the market is so oversold. It's just people know that, and they just rush in and start buying. So, so this is an indicator that we have we have looked at and applied on a number of occasions. Okay, it's a very good indicator. Can you uh, go ahead back to the standard graph? Thank you, Mark. Now, getting back to the price of the composite, if you want to zoom in over here again, Mark, that's fine. What we also said is, look, you wait two weeks here, and sometimes you've got to wait a third week to get that confirmation. We're leaving a lot of money on the table. On a score of 0 to 10, if you're able to nail the top, or nail the exact bottom, nail the top, I'm going to give you a score of 10. If you're one week late, you're going to get a score of 5 or 6 on the potential profit you can make. If you wait for the confirmed turn, you're going to get a score of 4 or 5. 
Now, you'll still make a lot of money, but you won't make the incredible amount of money you can make if you get closer to this top or bottom. And so you want to get in as close to the top or bottom as possible. So we defined a term, and I'm looking at this thing that says a primary wave. The primary wave is determined by the week-to-week -week direction of the price of the composite. In other words, if the price of the composite is higher than it was the week before, we say the primary wave is up. If the price of the composite is lower than it was from the week before, we say the primary wave is down. And it's very, very important to, to see that. And on a number of occasions, we have alerted our investors as to the impending trend of the market by just looking at the primary wave and some of the other things we look at, okay? Put the relative timing on here, Mark, and take the buy-sell off. The buy-sell ratio here on April the 9th, okay, went down, and the RT went down at that point, too. Uh, I'm looking at April the 9th because I remember writing about that. I wrote an essay called Hunker Down because I felt that the market has, had lost its momentum. I was watching this RT here, and it was going up, 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 and you notice how it, how it, right here for three weeks or so, it hardly did anything, and I could see it was losing momentum, so I wrote an article called Hunker Down, and they started calling me and saying, what do you mean, Hunker Down? And I said, well, if you never lived in Texas, you won't know what that means, but it means you crawl under the table and put your hands over the back of your head because there's trouble ahead. And, and sure enough, the market went up and down and up and down. And boy, did we have, did we have, we have a problem. So there are ways of, of sensing when you get to the bottom. I talked about confirmed signals. And what I'm talking about right now is this PowerPoint that says keys to recognizing turning points extremely large or small differences between price and stop. Put the stop price on there, Mark. If you see the price is way above the stop price, you gotta start thinking it's oversold. If you see the price is close to the stop price, close to the stop price, you gotta, you gotta be thinking, well, maybe it's gonna bounce back again, okay? And, and here, this first time I ever, 1998 was the first time I ever saw price break below the stop. And then, of course, in October, Dr. Greenspan raised the, it lowered the interest rate. Second point was a slowdown in the rate of change of RT. You could see that right here. Divergences between price and RT. Mark, take that stop price off. I want you to look very carefully at what's going on down here. Okay? Here, this price here, look at that. That was uh, September the 4th, 1998. And the price is, uh, the price is at 1660. And then it hit the ultimate bottom, I believe, on October the 9th. It had this little rally, this little sucker rally here, and it went down. And you see that the RT went up. In other words, that is a bullish divergence. And we can see when you have a bullish divergence like that, it means that the downward momentum of the market had been dissipated. And even though it went down further, the, the RT started bouncing back up. And that's a bullish sign. Let's go to the current time, Mark. We see just a tiny little bit of that here, but put the MTI on there, Mark. You see this? This price is down here, and this is up here. This price is up here, this is down. Okay, that's a, that's a bearish divergence. And so after you use the system for a while, you start looking for these, these hints as to what's going on. Another thing, of course, is the price was going up, and hitting higher highs, and the MTI was hitting lower highs. We've written about that a number of times. 
But these are the kinds of things that our speakers will show you in the weekly VectorVest University presentations when they show you the market timing section. But this is what this thing is all about. Divergences between price and RT. It could be a divergence between price and the market timing indicator or price or an RT also. Now, the last item says moving average crossovers. Of course, that's pretty obvious. We have the 40-day on there. Click on this 40-day mark. Where's the BSR at that point? Uh, the BSR is, uh, uh, led this. Here's, here's a crossover here. This one here, by, by the time, that, that coincided with the BSR. So that's just another indicator. If you don't want to wait for the 40-day, you can wait for the 30-day. But there are those signs of picking a turning point. I can uh, tell you that in all the years, you can undo this zoom, in all the years we've been doing this, I've never picked the bottom. I've tried, but even if I thought it was a bottom, I'm not going to tell you. And the reason why is you never know where the bottom really is until you see that movement up. And our, our philosophy is that we are a a tracking service. We're not a forecasting service. So we have to see evidence of the market turning up before we would advise our subscribers to start putting their money back in the market. Or we got to see evidence of it turning down before we advise to uh, go into cash or sell short or whatever. So we're never going to pick a bottom. But we came, we came pretty close here. Uh, if you could zoom in over there, Mark. This is still weekly. Let's go on a daily mode, Mark. No, no, just one year is fine. Because what I what I just wanted to do is give you the basic elements that are here in this book. And once again, we use these techniques to study the market and uh, hopefully to prepare our subscribers for what was uh, about to happen. Mark, draw a support line across here. That was one thing we wrote about. We wrote about how the market had bounced off of that support line a number of times. We have written time and time again about this phenomena of how the buy-sell ratio is hitting lower highs and the price is hitting higher highs. That's a sign of weakening momentum. After the market went down, we wrote about how we wanted to wait for this buy-sell ratio to go below 0.2 before we began thinking about you know, going long. And, and so we didn't get caught in this little counter rally here. And, and I consider this rally here you know, to be a charade. It, all the brokers and, uh, and banks got together and pushed stock prices up. And then some more bad news came out, and whammo, the stocks got killed. And they finally bottomed out, finally bottomed out when the buy-sell ratio actually during the day went down to 0.05. It ended the day at 0.10, and that, that suggested to us that this market had finally bottomed. So there are a number of techniques that we use to uh, sense a bottom. Now, I just want to take a minute to show you another graph that we use, it's the VectorVest Pro Trader graph that we use in market timing. Uh, this is the one I like to use. Uh, the VectorVest graph that you have, if you get Pro Graphics, it uses a line here. I'm using candlesticks, and I threw in the uh, moving average convergence, divergence, and this is the uh, detrended price oscillator. This detrended price oscillator is an excellent indicator. What I like about it is the candlesticks to me liven up the graph and signal to me more what's going on. If you study a little bit about candlesticks, these things up here where you don't get much movement, the, the green bar is the high and the low for the day. And if the stock closes lower than the open, the open was there and the stock closes lower than the open, it's a red body. And if it closes higher than the open, you get a green body. Well, if you don't get much movement at the end of the day, you had the battle all day long. The prices went up, prices went down. You ended up without much change. That's called a doji. 
And if you start seeing dojis, you know there's a battle going on. And if you're in an uptrend, you better watch out. So we saw that. And of course, the market started going down. And then right here, the, uh, the convergence divergence went from positive, the blue line was above, now it's, now it's transferring, went below. And that date was the 20th right there that happened. And so the market started going down. This thing here, this formation here, where the, the body ends, ends up on the upper side of the wick, I wish it was a little higher than that. It would have been stronger. That's called a hammer. And the, the idea is you hammered, you, you nail down the bottom, you hammer down the bottom. And that's a good formation. I like to use this because it just gives me another, another sense of interpretation. Hardly ever is there a contradiction because you're all using the same data. We're using the same pricing data in every event. Now, with this system, in order to get a confirmed upturn, we like to see the price go above this moving average. This is a 30-day weighted moving average, and it, the price is above that. Uh, we like to see the DPO, the detrended price oscillator, go above zero. And when that goes above zero, it's going to be very, very close to when we get the confirmed up. And so if the market does continue to move upward, we can anticipate a confirmed up signal. Some guy asked me this morning, when do you think it'll happen? Whether it'll happen next week? It's going to be, if it happens, it'll be later in the week. Because let's go to the other graph, Mark. It'll be later in the week because if the buy-sell ratio is having a hard time getting off the ground here. But you don't necessarily, unless you're very conservative, have to wait for the buy-sell ratio. I would say if we're going to get some good days next week, the market continues, I would start putting money in the market. I have personally have already had. But many, many investors don't want to wait for the bottom. Put the MTI in there, Mark. Take the buy-sell off. The MTI is moving up very nicely, but when we, when we get that primary wave, in the model portfolio, I waited for the primary wave to give us an up signal. In other words, the price closed higher than a week before, before we went long. That is okay. Some people, aggressive investors, we started advising aggressive investors to go long right in this period here, right after we saw that big, the big update and we saw the follow through Monday and Tuesday. So the idea is to get in as close as you can to the bottom, and the greedier you are, the more risk taker you are, the closer you get into the bottom. This day here, that Thursday, was an interesting day. Uh, Thursday's the bottom, but Thursday was a big down day. You look at the candlestick on that, you can see it was a big down day, and it ended up in the last half hour going up. Frankly, I think the uh, Wall Street guys, guys on Wall Street, knew that the Fed was going to lower the discount rate, and boy, in the last hour, they went and added hammer and tong. It's the kind of information we don't have. We can only see the results of that. But this is the timing system, okay? Now, we wanted to make this interpretation as easy as we could. So, Mark, let's go to a home page. And we put what we call the color guard on the home page. And... We look at the price, one column is for the price of the, the uh, composite, another column is for the RT, another column is for the buy-sell ratio, and then we have a graph of the market timing indicator. And there are a set of rules. There are a set of rules for when it's yellow and when it's green and when it's red. And you don't need to memorize those rules or anything. What we want you to do is look at this color guard and recognize that if you're in yellow, you're in a transition zone. If you see a green here, and that's when the primary wave went up from the prior week, and it was yellow, it goes from a yellow to a green, you get a, uh, you get a green signal. And if you start seeing more and more green signals, you know the market is getting stronger and stronger. On the other hand, a couple of weeks ago, this was all red. The market was going down. So you should be able to look at that color guard and in an instant get a sense of what the market is doing. And that's what we wanted to accomplish. Of course, you can then dig into what the MTI is and uh, what price is the composite. Now, the MTI, it combines the direction and, and movement of the price of the composite, the direction and movement of the RT, and the direction and movement of the buy-sell ratio. 
all in the MTI. The MTI is like the VST. It combines three factors, puts them together, and presents them to you in a zero to two scenario. So let's go back to the PowerPoint. I strongly suggest that you, you visit the university and listen to the market timing presentations each week. And if you have the time, also listen to the strategy of the week. But the market timing is so important. If you want to dig into it deeper, there's a whole series of, of essays that were written about it. These are in your software in VectorVest Views. Any questions on this? Okay, wonderful question. Uh, question was, we use 0 0.20 to sense a bottom, and what do we use for a top? Okay, it's totally different. Mark, go back to that market timing graph. One thing about that BSR, it can go high, and lately it's been going pretty high uh, last couple of years. So we don't use the buy-sell ratio. What I like to use is, I like to look at the buy sell hold percentages. And Mark, zoom in, zoom in in this area here. No, zoom in from here. Zoom in from here across there. That's good. What I like to look at is if the percent sells goes down below 10, I start thinking we're close to a top, and if it goes down below seven, you're way oversold. In other words, when there's only a few cells, it's not as clean a signal as the 0.2, but it is a good signal that when, when the percent sells goes below 0.10, and I like to see it go down to 7%, that signals that you're, you're getting to a top. Uh, the other things you wanna look for for a top are the loss of momentum, the divergence with, between price and buy-sell ratio, price and uh, MTI, and you want to see a weakening, a slowdown in the movement of those, those indicators. That's it for timing the market.